No system in the body ever works alone, never gets injured alone, never heals alone. There's no such thing as an isolated injury in the body. There's no such thing as isolated healing. It's all or nothing. The body is one piece. Unfortunately, we don't treat it that way. And I wanted to say that because when you talk about glymphatics, that just lymph is lymphatics kind of at the end, right? And glymph is for glial. And those are a type of cells that are in the brain. You've got several different types, which we'll talk about. So it's the same, but different. What I mean by that is that even though we're talking about glymphatics in the brain, it's not separated from the lymphatics in the rest of the body. Right. So in my work, you, I found that you need to work the lymphatic system first and always. <laughs> and then you'll notice that the glymphatics actually start to get better just from doing that. But then when you go more and work glymphatics, I found that your results are even better because you did the heavy lifting of the lymphatics first. Does that make sense? Yeah. Exactly. So that's a really long way for me to say that these systems always work together. And that when you've done the lymphatic work that we've talked about in the past, you've unknowingly and positively affected your glymphatic system. Basically, what that is, is that that's the medical term given to the brain waste management system that you have. You remember, we talked about the lymphatics of the body and the lymph nodes, and there are basically many toilets that you kind of flush out all the stuff that you don't want in your body, you know, bacteria, viruses, toxins, parasites, cancer cells. But also in this case for the brain, it's even more important. That's the metabolic cellular waste that's created from your cells dying every day on purpose, on purpose called autophagy. It's programmed death. And then other ones from uh, trauma or injury, but also just from your cells normally working every day, they make a lot of waste. And you need to flush the toilets in your brain too. So the glymphatics are the brain toilets. And here's the cool thing. I'll give you one guess where they go to the same place the lymphatics go. <laughs> so they all go to the same drain point which we'll go over when we get into it, is the collarbone. It goes to the veins of the collarbone. So everything goes to that sweet spot that we've talked about in the past. Mm. Right? What's interesting is that they used to think that the brain was immune privileged and really didn't have any interaction with the, what's called the peripheral, that's outside the head, immune system. But we realize through just progress and technology and what we can be able to see and asking different questions in science that we were wrong, that there is something there. And uh, so those plumbing systems, if they get uh, backed up, you get inflammation in the brain, just like you get inflammation in any body part. So for instance, if your lymphatic system doesn't work well, you may get swelling, inflammation, pain, edema, chronic pain, and like a leg. Same thing happens to your brain. It's just called something different than it's called neuroinflammation, nerve inflammation. You may know that as things like uh, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and ADHD, things like that. Anything, brain fog, that's a big one, brain fog. Which I'll tell you right now, brain fog is the number one symptom that you have in my world of a lymphatic system clog and a glymphatic system clog. Because if you clog one, you clog the other. They're both going that way. So in essence, we'll get more into it in detail. The glymphatic system is the waste management plumbing system of your brain. And if it is not functioning at optimum, 
you're going to see some symptoms somewhere that can actually be quite debilitating, mm -hmm. but it, it, it happens slowly over time. And, and we'll talk about some more of the symptoms that you might experience from that, but that's the gist of what it is. Okay. And then I, you kind of maybe already said this, but just to clarify, because there's such an intimate connection between the lymphatics and the glymphatics, if you've got symptoms of lymphatic congestion, you've listed some of them there, we are kind of saying that you've you've got a glymphatic issue as well, just by default. I'm going to tell you that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Now, whether they've been able to, well, you know what, they actually have been able to show that through research that, see, these immune systems in your brain and in the peripheral part of the body, they talk to each other. Mm. So they found through research, there's a brilliant uh, neuroscientist researcher named Jonathan Kipnis, K-I-P-N-I-S. He actually was one of the people that discovered what they call the meningeal lymphatics. That's the lymphatics and the meninges are the covering of the brain. Okay. <clears throat> and you've got several different layers of them. One is called the dura mater. And then there's a system that, holy cow, it's it's there. And then wait, I'll tell you later, they discovered a brand new layer of the brain they never knew about. And uh, so he talks about that if you have inflammation in the peripheral lymphatics immune system that will trigger the glymphatic system to start to go a little haywire because stuff can cross the blood brain barrier and then you get inflammation in the brain so a lot of people end up having neuroinflammation and brain issues because they've got such a clogging in the rest of the body but people don't look at the rest of the body. They just go after the brain because that's where they're feeling the symptoms, right? And it goes the other way around. Like if it goes from the body up to the brain, well, it can go from the brain to the body. So many people have pain in body parts and they attack the body parts. Meanwhile, you should go after the glymphatics in the brain because you'll help it that way too. So the, the rule is you work both because mm. they're going to influence each other. Now, to me, that makes a whole heap of common sense because, I mean, do you really think that just because your brain sits on top of your shoulders that it doesn't communicate with the rest of your body? I mean, it's all connected through the same pipes, flow pipes, fluid pipes. And the fluids for you and your body, we've talked about before, a big one are your lymphatics, okay? And if you remember what we said before, you have about 700 lymph nodes in your body. Some say four to seven, somewhere in there. I just want you to know this more than two. Okay. One third of that number is from the neck up. Remember that? Why do you think that is? Well, because it's got to take the drainage from the brain. Really important stuff. Right. <clears throat> so if you get clogged in the lymph nodes in the neck, guess what? You clog the lymph nodes in the brain because those pipes sit there and pipes transmit fluid all over the place. And then you also have your blood flow pipes that sit there too. Blood supply going to your brain and then the veins coming from your brain, which also transfer waste. Okay. And I'll give you one guess what all that brain waste that you have when we talk about how it works in a moment, because it's quite fascinating. Where do you think that dumps? It dumps into the veins in your neck. And it dumps into the lymph in your neck. So here's the moral of my story. If you're clogged at the collarbone and you're clogged in your neck, well, it only makes sense you're going to be clogged in your brain. So maybe you should clear the collarbone and the neck first then that automatically helps the brain drain better. It's sitting in less of its own waste, cl clogged toilet brain that you have, okay? So that's actually quite fascinating when you realize that. And then when I taught people the big six, you remember the big six where I taught people the six primary places to release the lymph node clusters in the body to help your lymphatic system and your blood flow? Well, the first two, 
are the collarbone and the upper part of the neck behind the angle of the jaw, right below where everything drains. There's a reason I give those to you first, because I need to help the brain start to drain at the same time. Right? So it's all just based on pressure. If everything is supposed to drain to the collarbone and it can't, where's it got, where's it going to go? Well, it's going to go straight back up into your brain is where it's going to go. And then you're going to have waste, particularly proteins, metabolic proteins, amyloid proteins, tau proteins. Those are the ones that cause all the inflammation and really link to Alzheimer's. And um, you're going to feel it, right? Because they, they can't get out. Now, I'm going to jump to something really quick, which is quite fascinating. I was speaking to Dr. Kipnis about this, and uh, they had some drugs for Alzheimer's that they were really – uh, excited about on, you know, making a difference in uh, the Alzheimer's symptoms. And they put them through the clinical trials and they were extremely disappointed in the outcome because the medication started to break up the proteins, right? It started to dislodge the proteins that are like glue, muck, it's called. But people weren't getting better. And then they figured out, well, why in the world would that be? Well, let's think about it logically now. What happens if the proteins you dislodge, but they can't get out? Right? That's like having a clogged sink. And all you do is stick your hand in the sink and you swirl it around. You're going to make everything worse because it got stirred up. But the drain is still clogged. So now they're looking at opening up the drainage pathways, sure. which I just told you how to do. A big, a big part of it is if you're clogged in what they call the deep cervical lymph nodes, deep means deep. They're really far in there next to the spine. Cervical means neck, lymph nodes to the toilets. That's where most of the brain, what's called cerebral waste is supposed to go. If they're blocked, they're going to stay up in the head. Does that make sense? That's really yeah. big to understand where the, when the light bulbs go off, then you're just, you're like, oh my God. I mean, that's so simple. Could it, could it really be that simple? And in my mind, it is.